Okay, this is my storage yard. Four tracks in here, there's four trains hiding in there. And I got another train out on a yard on a main track too, which is waiting. So to begin the uh, show, as I call it, I just hit my start button. Everything lines up. And train number one is going to pull out of the yard. And it goes through a little tunnel, through a backdrop on the way out. Comes out over there. And as soon as that train hits a CDS cell back behind that train waiting on track two, it's almost there. It's going to stop. Oh, and the yard lead already switched to the main. All automatically. So that guy is going to go around the first train running behind the train waiting on main track two. He's going to go around the back of the layout behind the coal breaker from the anthracite region and the comb pile. And it's going to come around that and approach this crossing. I'm going to pause for a second. Just for the sake of saving a few seconds on the video, I paused. I haven't touched anything. My hands are both free. I'm not touching anything. This program is just running. And this is the first train. Meanwhile, the second train is moving on yard track two. Or I mean, uh, sorry, main track two. And the first train is going to continue. And those two trains are going to pass each other. One on main track one, and the alcohols are on main track two. And they're going to pause, stop short of this turnout. Because of a CDS cell buried right there. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a different one. Right there. Stop clear. So now, train number one, as soon as he gets to a sensor that's kind of behind that yellow house back there, Almost there. Oh, as soon as he hit it, the yard lead switch through, and we're doing a backup move into the yard again, all automatically. Thanks to Mini Panel. So we'll see him park in the yard over here. He's on yard track one. He's backing down. As soon as he, that caboose covers up a CDS cell for track one, you're going to see that blue light come on. It's track one, input two on the, on the mini panel. There it goes. Train one came to a stop. We're going to select the turnout for train number two, which backs out. It's going to be three or four F units and it consists. Okay, we'll go back out to the layout. And we're seeing him back out onto the layout. And that caboose hits the uh, CDS cell back behind that yellow house. Coming up to it, getting there. We're gonna see the switch for the yard. There it goes. To change the track to the main track. And the train is moving forward on main track one. And that's gonna overtake the train waiting on main track two here.
And then that train will go around the loop. The layout is basically just a big oval. <laughs> now I'm going to pause it here for a second. Okay, so the train on uh, main track one, as soon as he hits that sensor, which is around behind that house, a couple of things are going to happen. That turnout is going to change for the yard track, the yard lead. And that train's going to run down the yard lead into yard track two. A lot of fun. Come on down there and show you that. <laughs> there he goes. On the yard lead. And he's going to pull into track two. And as soon as that engine hits the sensor at the end of the yard on track two, you see the blue light come on. Where is it? That one. It's track two, input three. Input three on the mini panel. All it does is ground the input. And you heard the turnouts throw, and the third train is automatically lined out the yard lead and onto the main. I'm using uh, old fashioned Chemtron twin coil switch machines. If you use those, you're going to have to uh, beef up your current supply. I'll show you how to do that for a small Atlas twin coil switch machines. You won't need uh, any extra current uh, handling. They should just run directly off the Q-snap. Okay, I'm going to pause it until we get out on the main here. Oh, I forgot to mention that train that was waiting pulled out automatically on its own and that's it's going to stop behind that yellow house on track two as soon as it covers up that CDS cell. There she goes, she stopped. Meantime, that local with the one Jeep is on track one and it's going to make its way around the layout. And when he hits that sensor, you're going to see the yard lead automatically, the yard lead switch automatically switch to the main. As soon as he gets to that far CDS cell on track one, because he's got to come all the way on the layout, cross over that switch on the main, there it goes, to hit the CDS cell. Okay, he's made his way around the whole layout. That switch automatically changed uh, back to the main after the train on track two cleared. And as soon as this guy, that engine's going to run all the way around on track one, all the way around until it gets the CDS cell behind that yellow house behind track two. The two uh, CDS cell for track one and track two are in close proximity. And when that happens, as soon as that engine covers that CDS cell, it's getting close. We're gonna see. We're gonna see that turn out. There it goes, and he immediately begins backing up. And we'll run out to the storage yard again. Watch that process again. Coming through, here he comes. 
all lined for yard track number three. This is back down automatically. Now when that caboose gets to the end of the track, it's going to cover that CDS cell and that's going to command the uh, mini panel to back out train number four. Actually, uh, train number five on track, yard track four. And you're going to see this switch line itself automatically. There it goes. And here he comes. It's another local. And he's going to go out to the yard lead onto the main. Let me go back out there. And basically it's the same process over and over and over again. He's backing out the yard lead onto main track one very slowly, obviously. It's cold down here, so my, my, mo my uh, locomotives are running a bit sluggish. But it really doesn't matter how slow they run. Everything, all the timing is controlled by when the train covers up one of the CDS cells, which initiates the next step in the program. And that's the last train in the sequence. As soon as that guy, that caboose covers up. See the SO, which is right back there. Again, you're going to see that switch. I have an LED. The signal, there it goes. And he immediately starts backing up. I haven't touched the controller or switch motor press button or anything the whole time here. It's all happening automatically. So he's going to do the same thing. Run around the track. That same sensor back behind that yellow house when it sees him come around on track one again it's going to line for the yard lead and he'll pull into yard track four automatically and that's the end of the sequence. RS3. And that's another part of the layout. This is the West Pittston branch of the Lehigh Valley, which I model. And this is the Bloomsburg branch. DL and W and Erie Lackawanna for most of my life until 76 of course pause it for a second. So that local just crossed over the CESL which automatically threw the turnout for the yard lead and he's gonna just automatically pull himself down the yard lead and into track number four. Unzoom that. And as soon as he reaches the end of yard track number four, you'll see that blue LED come on on the CDS cell relay output. And all it's going to do is ground input number five in my program. There it goes. And the turnouts have all been set. Or at least, well, that turnout reset. Now when I start the program over again, I can do that. I'm just going to press the button, the start button, and you'll see this guy automatically throw, and also the yard lead throw, and the whole sequence starts all over again. There goes train number one. <laughs> 